Diversity is when everyone feels like they can bring whatever their wealth of experience is to the table and to be appreciated equally, regardless of what their background looks like. But that requires people come from different backgrounds, um, whether it's so socioeconomic diversity, um, gender orientation, sexual orientation, race, religion, all of these different things that make up who we are. Um, if we can take all those backgrounds and the experiences that come from that and all be mixed in one room together and then really feel like we have the opportunity to just be who we are without having to hide any piece of it. Inclusion is where you want to get those different people, those different groups of people to talk to each other and to understand each other and to accept each other for who they are and that's the much more difficult piece and I think that that's where you know Vanderbilt and all colleges and you know the world in general still has a lot of room to grow. You know it's one thing to get people in the same room and to kind of check that box up of yes I've got my quota of you know XYZ um, but that is not ensuring that you were, you know, achieving inclusion. So I moved back and forth between India and the U.S. for the entirety of my life. Um, if you ask me where I'm from, I still have to take a pause because I can't, I don't know where I'm from. I don't, like, I'll, I'll answer with my parents, or one of my parents lives in Wisconsin, or I'll answer with, I went to high school in Wisconsin. Growing up, all my life it was just about not not standing out, like not sticking out, and changing who I am to fit in with the norm. I try my best to be white, and that's something that I didn't actually realize until I came to Mandy, which uh, was quite an eye-opening experience. Like, people would be like, "Oh, like you're you're the you're the coolest Asian I know, or like you're the most attractive Asian I know." I'll be like, "Yeah, I have so much pride, you know," and it's just, "Oh, it makes me feel like <laughs> right now." <laughs> to touch a little bit on my identity growing up. Um, just being one of the only few queer people in my town and and then after I came out one being one of the only few visibly queer people in my town it was very difficult to navigate right because my identity as like a queer multiracial Asian man um, like I'm a unicorn right like I'm not supposed to exist in this world I don't see myself and um, I'll see myself in movies, in books. There was very little guidance for me to really navigate my own identity, which caused a lot of, you know, uh, confusion and trauma and um, these feelings that I didn't know how to reconcile. I felt like, um, I felt lost all the time. It took me a long time to realize that like, I could lay claim to my own identity. I am Cam half Cambodian and half Chinese. My mom is Cambodian, my dad is Chinese, but my dad, even though he's Chinese, grew up in Vietnam. I went over to Kip South Fulton Academy. It was majority black. Everybody treated me like I was one of them, almost. You know, like I, like I, like I grew up with them. Like we were sisters, like we were brothers. They're like, Amy, you know, he started tall like us. I got, I, I got a little bit of, of an urban accent at that point, um, and. It was great. It was it was amazing. Then I got a scholarship, and I decided to go to a private high school because better opportunities, right? On the first day of school, I had one um, one one black boy in my class. Class was dismissed. School was over. I was at my locker, and I was on the phone with one of my friends. I put my phone down in my locker. He took my phone, he threw it across the hallway, he said, why are you trying to act like They singled me out. The way that people knew me, my name was not Amy. My name was the Asian girl who acted black. And I was like, this is just so stressful. Just to come to school every single day and have to defend myself. I don't have to justify my actions. I don't have to justify the way that I talk. You don't justify the way that you talk, do you? That's something I can't help. That's something I can't help. The same thing with my innocence. That's something I can't help. The reason people come to Vanderbilt is because they want a diverse experience and they want an inclusive experience and they want to be challenged. I went to a high school that was very homogeneous. Um, a lot of the people looked like me, thought like me, talked like me, uh, had very similar backgrounds, were raised very similarly to me. And I knew that Vanderbilt was going to be a very diverse experience. We all come from different backgrounds, we get to Vanderbilt, and we either have an impression that this is 
more diverse than what we're used to or this is less diverse than what we're used to. Um, and so I think that people want to uh, interact with people that aren't necessarily like them. I think that people are just afraid to do it. Being president of SACE and being in meetings with other umbrella organizations made me realize, like, hey, I don't understand anything. Like, I really don't know much. And that's when I think I started to have more motivation to get involved in, say, the Multicultural Leadership Council or having more critical conversations with some of those leaders. So it started off with a really unintentional sort of thing, but it became slowly intentional as I developed, I think, as a leader and became a little bit more mature. I wanted to understand why I, as a multiracial student, felt like I was floating between communities, why, why people looked down on me for becoming part of VSG and then also becoming part of the MLC exec board in the same year, why people looked were confused why I was in a Panhellenic Greek sorority, but was really invested in the cultural community. I actually just spoke to a first year about this too, and she, was, she literally has the same life, almost similar story to me, and she just doesn't understand why, and I was like, you don't have to. There's, you don't have to feel restricted because of anything other than the fact that you want to do it. If you do, don't do it, then who is going to? This is not just an issue that I'm going through, this is an issue that most, probably everyone's going to go through. Um, there's going to be more Rebecca Chong's that come through Vanderbilt. I mean, I met one today, um, and I said that to myself when I was a first year student, deciding what to do with my you know, next three years, and here it is, and it came full circle, and I was like, wow, this is why I did those things, and it really, I mean, I'm getting emotional because when I was talking to her, she started crying, and I just met her today because all I had to do was tell her I did it before, and then she was like, okay, I can do it. And that made the biggest difference. I'm the type of person who always needs a strong community. You know, without a community, I don't think I can function. I don't think I can be where I am now without the people I have supporting me. And I really felt that yesterday when it was my birthday, because I just felt so much love. I kept, people kept asking me, like, how was your birthday, you know? Did you have a good night? And I was like, it's been the Actually, I feel like I'm gonna cry right now. But it was just like one of those like best things because I felt so showered by love and it was, it was so good. So and that's like one of the biggest things about the community here. That's why I love it and that's why I want to build this community for future, for future students. I am the opinion editor for the Vanderbilt Hustler and I am also the vice president of the African Student Union. I wanted that job because I wanted to create spaces for people, for groups of people and for individuals who felt like they couldn't tell their story or they, um, or they couldn't talk about the things that mattered to them. Storytelling is at the, um, the root of who I am. Being vice president of the African Student Union, just being a black student leader and being a member of the multicultural community here is such a blessing. Um, you know, being part of the MLC and, and going to the meetings and just like having friends in this community is, I mean, APOM that just happened, like just so great. So, so, so great. You know, you have friends who are leaders and you get featured on NBC News. That's awesome. Um, but you know, that's, that's just who we are. We see things that are wrong. We don't just complain and whine about them. We engage them. We confront them. We invite others to do the same. Back home, I, I dance all the time. That's another huge part of my culture. And like, whether it's socially with my fa my family, dancing salsa or merengue, um, or just like fooling around with my friends at a party, like just being really silly. Like, dance has always been something that's projected me. Um, in any arena that I'm in. When I came to college, I needed to find that outlet and I joined Bunga Doors um, on a whim. You know, I'd never seen Bunga before, but I wanted to try something else. Like, I wanted to find a community where I could, like, just learn about people. It was really scary because I, I didn't know what I was doing. And I think that's, like, the first step when trying to, like, figure other cultures out is, like, being scared and saying, I really don't know what you're talking about. You know, and my friends speak Hindi at, like, like during practice and I'm just like, what did you say, you know? And even now after three years of being on the team, I'm finding like new things to learn, you know? I joined Greek Life and in the same way why I came to Vanderbilt, I said that if I am truly going to take advantage and really engage in the opportunity and the gift that I have to be here on this campus, to be here with people that I 
want to get to know them better, I want to hear their stories and hear how their lives were and what shaped them, then I need to actively seek those out. And so Greek life for me was one way that I could engage in that manner. A lot of people back home make fun of me for joining Greek life or being in Greek life. They say that I talk wider now or why are you taking so many pictures with white people, you know, like things like that, oh you're just a sorority girl now. Usually there's kind of a stigma of Asian girls joining Greek life, either they're seen as assimilating, they're seen as throwing away their culture. The fact that there are all these different stereotypes for that become really problematic internally. My big gave a kind of speech to the nurse sorority um, this past semester and she said that, you know, she grew up in North Carolina, race issues were not really on her mind, and when she had me as a little, what made me cry made her cry and she became someone who was so much more aware of the things going around that she never knew existed. I was never aware of my position as a biracial person in a situation of all white people. I was never aware of that until I came to college and then when someone questioned me and was like why don't you spend time with more black people? I think a lot of people make it seem like it's so easy um, but when you grow up for 17 years um, not with that not being a part of who you are and then you come here and people are like well, why isn't it a part of you and you don't have an answer to it um, and then people want you to all of a sudden like really embrace it and be a part of it when for 17 years it hasn't been um, I think that that is really challenging um, but there have been people who have wanted to listen and who have wanted to understand people even think that makes a lot of sense as to why you talk the way you do and dress the way you do and hang out with who you do. That makes sense and it's like, that validation is incredible. For a lot of freshman year I felt that I didn't really make many friends on my floor because of, like because I was an international student. I just had a hard time talking to people um, about what they talked about. Like, they talked about video games and sports and I was just like so completely uninterested in football. Um, yeah, it just made conversations very difficult. And outside of my floor, I was just always... I didn't know that I wanted more meaningful com or conversations to happen. Slash, I kind of did, but didn't know how to go about have, making those more meaningful relationships with people. This year, I've gotten involved in, like, as an RA and a view center. I wanted to make sure that if anyone needed um, to learn those things about being intentional, about reaching out to other people, um, and about, like, not being scared to talk about diversity and inclusion. Um, I wanted to make sure those conversations were happening and not being as generic as like, oh, make friends with an international student and learn about their culture, but more so um, realize how difficult it can be to feel like an outsider um, and try to be more empathetic towards that and get to know the person for who they are because that's what they actually need. I think we just need to be okay with not knowing, you know? Grasping, taking that, and just saying, hey, look, I don't know this thing, and I'd like you to teach me. What would you say to someone who's a little hesitant to join the discussion and take action with regard to diversity and inclusion issues? The first thing that I would say is that person was me when I got here. You know, I come from the definition of um, a sheltered background, and for me, it was very, very hard to start having these conversations but what I would say to someone who's feeling that way is it's okay to feel uncomfortable um, I still feel uncomfortable sometimes when I have these conversations they're not easy um, they're not easy for me they're not easy for I would say the vast majority of people no matter your background however something that I have learned um, throughout my time at Vanderbilt is that these conversations are necessary to create an effective change and while it may be uncomfortable while it may be hard um, we have to do it to achieve the end result that we want. We can't go into a conversation saying, I want to change your mind. I want to go into a conversation saying, what do you think? And what do I think? And how are they similar? Where do they differ? How can we come to a, like, a common ground? One of the things that I noticed in Greek life was just that there wasn't that much knowledge about all of the richness that was present on Vanderbilt's campus. Like meeting a whole bunch of different people through various events and organizations, etc., has been like just a super enriching experience. And so I would say, like, don't don't be afraid to step out of that bubble, um, and just don't be afraid to interact with people, and then like form genuine relationships and maintain those. Just don't do it in a superficial way to say like, 
oh hey like I'm not just a member of Greek life I do XYZ like if you have relationships to prove that then that's what makes it worth it not whatever thing you write down on your CV the root of a sorority is sisterhood and making our sisterhood stronger in terms of how we support one another promote each other and encourage each other to become better people and I think that that goes along with making our space a comfortable space for everyone um, in our chapter as well as making it a comfortable space for people outside of our chapter to come and feel like this is somewhere I can be comfortable this is somewhere where I will be valued as a person and I think that's also in terms of having our organization be one where members of the campus who are not involved with Greek life and have no plan to be involved with Greek life feel like um, I want to go to your events, I want to interact with you, I want to share a space with you because I know that you um, you are someone who is caring and kind and embraces me as a person on this campus in this world. Within Greek life today we have more people of color and more people outside of the traditional Greek life setting going through recruitment and that is beautiful because you can't change a system unless you're a part of the system. Um, I myself hold a number of historically marginalized identities, um, including um, the fact that I'm transgender, the fact that I'm queer, um, the fact that I have mental illness, um, that I'm working class, all these things come together. I feel tolerated, but not accepted or celebrated, is what I'll say. Um, I think that we're moving and we're making strides in really celebrating and accepting trans people but I find that most people find that like their understanding of trans people is like this unicorn. So I think that there's a lot of like mystery and awe around it and I think we really need to make structural changes in order to support students in order for this environment to be really inclusive um, and centering trans people. I think a lot of people that fall into Mitchell Brady Vanderbilt think that they don't have a role in diversity or inclusivity. Um, and the truth is that everyone on this campus needs to be involved if we want to make Vanderbilt a more inclusive campus. People who identify as white also have so many other diverse things as do other, other people. And making friends with people outside of your typical community is so important to make that intentional move to become friends with people of different ability levels of different diversity factors don't just you don't just want to have your token black friend or your token asian friend like that is not okay and token i just mean like the one person you get to be your one authority on all things asian just get to know people as individuals and then how their race ethnicity diversity factors into their identity and how that shaped their experience but that's not going to be the same for everyone who shares the same traits like just getting to know a variety of people. I know it's hard to, to deal with all of these issues and sometimes you feel angry and sometimes you feel hopeless, but if we want to make a difference on this campus, if we want to you know, really engage with diversity, it has to come from a place of love, it has to come from a place of compassion. As students, we don't really recognize the power we have on our campus. Most things that you see on this campus were done because students said something about it. The fact that we have MLK Day off is students. The fact that we have a Project Safe is students. The fact that um, well, like we're doing diversity and inclusion initiatives now are students. Um, and so I think that students really need to wake up and realize the power they have and get involved. And even if you're terrified and even if you don't know what you're doing, um, just jump in and I promise that people will help you along the way. Um, and we need to do that to really make vulnerable the space that it really can be. On paper, it looks like I'm a pretty successful college student. And that's what I convinced myself. I was like, I've done college right. But lately, especially in the past two and a half months, after just talking to people, I've realized I really don't understand a lot of what is out there to be understood. And that's what I would really strongly emphasize to people, is that you probably don't understand a lot more than you think you understand. and. Just keep an open mind when you talk to people and when you have interactions on this campus because you really never know what you learn. I thought I had it all figured out, but like this year has turned that on its head. To the students who don't feel they understand what's going on when it comes to diversity and inclusion issues with regard to students of color or in terms of the student body as a whole, what would you say to those students? Oh, yeah. um, my message to them would be hi. My name is Akani Ruffin and I'm from Montgomery, Alabama.
a mom. Um, and I want Vanderbilt to love me in the same way I wanted to love it. And from the moment I set foot on this campus, I haven't received, oh my God, I haven't received the gift that I thought they, that the campus should have given me. And um, most of the times I'm not mad at you specifically. Most of the times I'm frustrated with the way America works and the ways in which you were never taught to see me and to see me as human and to value my experience. And in some ways that's not your fault, but you have the opportunity to change that and to listen and to hear and to recognize that so many of us have been hurt and have been scarred and dealing with that scar is not going to happen overnight. Neither will it be made better by anonymous comments on social media, which of course I read. And it makes it very difficult to exist in a space where people feel so free to malign everything about our identities. Um, and then say that everything is all good. So my message to them would be, listen, hear, See me as a full, well-rounded human, and maybe we can work together. I promise, I don't fight.